Hey guys, it's winter here right now and I'm just waiting out uh, the spring weather and I thought I'd do a quick video of my first build. This is a 2015 Sprinter Crew Cab 4x4 um, high roof short wheelbase. And I did this build back in 2015. My first one, um, again an interesting layout. This was for two adults and one child. And I'll show you the inside, kind of a unique layout as well. It's a little dirty right now. Okay, so if we go inside, the first thing you can see is uh, most of the build is done with 8020. Uh, this outer cabinet here is the toilet. Got a kitchen right in the front here, swivel seats. And then in the back, you can see we've got basically um, a king size bed on the bottom with. Um, a two-person rear bench with seat belts, and I bought this from um, a company called Safari Condo out of Quebec. They were nice enough to send it to me. It's been uh, highway approved for the seat belts. And then you can see up above, I've got upper cabinets, and I used the profile of the A20 that gave me a extra ledge on either side. And um, using a aluminum ATV ramp, I was able to make a bed. And that becomes a bunk for um, for one child up top. So basically you get a bunk up top and you get a king size bed down below. And then underneath the bed area is where the water tank is, 20 gallon water tank, lithium batteries, um, gray water tank, water pump, and all the electrical. Got the electrical panel down here. I have a gauge pack here that gives me my fresh water and my black water levels. For the kitchen, I ended up using um, flush mount sink. And then after much trial and error, I originally had a built-in two burner stove. I found that took up most of the countertop. Um, and then I tried a removable two burner stove and I have these rib nuts in here that was holding it down. Again, found it took up too much space, so I've, I've ended up at uh, this solution, which um, basically is really easy. Gives me two full burners again, um, and the nice thing is I can take them out if I don't want to have them there and have more space, or if we want to cook out on a picnic table, you just literally lift it out. Um, but they don't move, they don't rattle, and it's super easy and super efficient. So after three different stoves, I've, I've sort of landed on this. I have an electric hot plate that I use as well sometimes. Um, little things like drawer down below because I have the room. I have to make cutouts for the stove. Um, down below the sink. Manage to fit in many drawers. I got my switch pack there. Uh, compressor st compressor fridge. I've got the lagoon table that can go there and sit in between the two chairs. And it can also attach down below here um, for the back area. So the bathroom again is another interesting solution that I came up with. Basically, you've got a cassette toilet here that comes out the side to empty. Really easy. And then up above I have um, shower curtain, two shower curtains that I sewed together, and you all you have to do is unhook one hook, and then using magnets that are attached to the 8020, clips on. So it's hard to see, but you end up with a full room inside for the toilet, and there's a velcro separator at the front that allows you to actually reach into the sink if you want to wash your hands while you're in there. Um, and it becomes a large change room area. Works out really well. Um, it's great for families too, where people want to change and privacy um, and really fast to pop up and take down. I'll open up the beds just so you can see what it looks like when it's set up in bed mode, um, but it's really easy. I just take off one strap and uh, pull out the top part. And the, the bottom bed, you just literally pull and it drops down into a king size. 
Okay, this is what the bed set up. So down below you can see you've got a quite a large full king size bed and there's plenty of room to sit up. Um, no shortage of space there. And then up above, and again, a six foot long bed for, um, for our daughter. And she made a, I won't bother putting it on, but a privacy screen again it attaches with magnets um, and drops down to give her more privacy up there. And she has access to cabinets and USB outlets and lights and various things. We have a, fan, uh, a Max Air fan up top as well. But lots of room for her to get into the bed. She can literally just step up onto the toilet cabinet and crawl in. And she can also use the countertop, but it's really easy for her. And with the 8020, it is rock solid. I can hang from it, it doesn't move. couple other things I built in my own range hood I couldn't figure out a solution that I liked so I ended up buying some range hood filters building them into the 8020 and I found a hood a hood and I actually used leftover furnace ducting from my diesel um, heater I ducted it along the back of the cabinetry and what I did was I just ended up putting an outlet right here and so it basically it blows out underneath the fan so then when I want to use the the range I can just turn it on it blows out and turn on the fan and it blows straight out the roof and that way I didn't have to put another opening in my um, in my roof from lying in bed I've got a couple different outlets one is run off of the inverter from the motor running and the other is an inverter from the lithium batteries from my Aspar diesel heater control so while I'm lying in bed I can control that as well and the switches are all reachable from bed so I wanted them accessible from both standing up and when you're lying down and you can see the, the heaters down there in the under passenger seat location I've got a uh, Magnum battery charger inverter um, that charges and inverts from the lithium batteries blue C breaker panels for DC and AC uh, trimetric battery monitor and uh, this this switch here I'm able to switch my AC input into the van charger from either shore power um, or the generator setting is actually the inverter that comes off of the engine so I have an inverter down here hooked into the engine so when it's running um, I can charge the batteries using the inverter and that was rather than trying to get a DC to DC charger to work in the van and it's worked flawlessly for the last seven years so I'm very happy with with that snuck a garbage can in over there for the windows in here I have um, blackout fabric shades that I just made out of um, blackout material I was able to get and <clears throat> because these windows were already installed, the two side windows, I needed a way to affix um, the shades without building too much of a frame. So I ended up using um, rib nuts and eye loops and then just some aircraft cable. And it's worked again, it's worked beautifully um, the whole time. I've got magnets put into these so it can hold them out so they have everything magnets out and you get complete blackout um, on an easy to pull cable. Works like that for all the windows. I added the two back windows, they're double pane glass windows with uh, sliders that lift up and screens on them. So you can get pretty decent airflow in there. And then another screen there as well. So we can black out the whole, the whole van. For the front I just have a piece of the blackout fabric that will actually cover all the windows all in one one go for the for the front side so for those walmart camping trips you can have complete darkness when you're parked underneath the uh, overhead lights anyway that's this build if anyone has any questions happy to answer